you come this far, then you know it's out there. You're not gonna scare us. You scared him? Oh my, <laughs> so those guys, purely science fiction, but the show, The Last of Us, based on the premise that a fungal infection turned people into more or less zombies, got a lot of people talking about these types of infections and what the real ones are. Yeah, okay, we're gonna talk about the actual science of all of this with ABC News Medical Unit Coordinating Producer, Sony Saltzman. Sony, thanks so much for being here. I have to say, I don't love the idea of talking about any kind of fungal <laughs> anything, but um, what, legitimately is at stake here. Are these things real? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I mean, I will say part of our reporting was really inspired by The Last of Us, which, as you pointed out, is science fiction. But here's what is real. An estimated 1.7 million people are dying of fungal infections, and that is more than tuberculosis or malaria. Wow. So the World Health Organization put out a warning actually at around the same time as the show. And what they are warning is that this is a priority pathogen. We really need to be paying attention to this. So what are fungal infections? and who is at risk. I'm not talking about athlete's foot, although that is also a fungal infection. I'm talking about fungal infections that get into your lungs and in some cases make their way to your brain. So huh. those are the deadly ones that we're talking about. And mostly people who are at risk right now are people with underlying conditions, immune compromised, but increasingly healthy people are getting sick. And in the course of our reporting, I interviewed a mom of two who, you know, was bedridden for months. Ooh. And mm. I also interviewed a man who had, unfortunately, a fungal infection that traveled to his brain. Oh. He had to have a port drilled into oh. his skull and he has to have medication delivered that way for the rest of his life. Oh. And so these are serious and I think that it's something the World Health Organization and the CDC are trying to raise awareness of. So after the show came out, I you know Googled, can this actually happen? And I, I read something about a climate change factor. I mean, just add it to the growing list of horrors that <laughs> cli climate right? change can cause. What is the, the warming Mm. impact of this. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up climate change because it is a really important piece of the puzzle here. So, you know, according to the CDC, climate plays in in several ways. One is that we're using more and more antifungals. For example, farmers mm. are using them on crops, right? Another is that uh, the world, so our bodies, if you think about this right now, they're about 98.6 degrees, right? Roughly speaking, that's pretty warm. Actually, it's pretty hot. And historically, that has not been a very hospitable environment for a fungus to thrive. But if the planet keeps warming and fungi evolve to survive and thrive in increasingly hot temperatures, they will, according to the CDC, thrive in our hot bodies. Our warm bodies. Yes. Wow. Well, when you talk about oh. a cure or a vaccine or something like that, how does an NFL legend tie in to a possible cure or vaccine for this? Yeah, so this is a, you know, a hopeful and, and somewhat fun part of the story. So Rob Gronkowski, uh, NFL tight end, uh, very famously, people call him Gronk, as you know, he is very involved in this. So we do have right now antifungal drugs. We don't have as many as we need, but we do have drugs that can treat fungal infections. We also have tests, but what we don't have are vaccines. So those patients that I mentioned earlier, they were ill with a, a fungal infection known as valley fever. It's endemic to the American Southwest mostly. Gronk, Rob Gronkowski, he is actually kind of, you know, an investor in a vaccine that could soon be here for dogs because dogs get very sick mm, uh, with wow. this too. So even though it's for dogs for now, not for people yet, it would still be a milestone because dogs, you know, one day that could, it would be the first kind of yeah. vaccine for mammals. Right. So it would be a big deal and he's a big dog lover. Are, are these um, infections, are they transmissible? from no. person to person. So in some cases, yes, but the valley fever, it depends on the fungus. The valley fever one I mentioned, no, you get it from inhaling spores okay. that are in the dirt. So there are some fungal infections. There's a yeast called Candida auris that really can rip through a hospital very quickly and that mm. can be a dangerous uh, situation. But for the most part, these respiratory illnesses, they're from our environment. They're from inhaling the spores, which then replicate inside your lungs. Uh, Fascinating. Uh, scary stuff. Uh, Glad opening. they're working on yeah. a vaccine. Uh, absolutely. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Of course. Thank we you both. Thank it. you all Thanks so much for having me. It's been a, it's been a pleasure.